Hello. Welcome back. Captain Wolf here. And we are playing Subnautica. This is episode 15. So, uh... I do have something planned for this episode. We are gonna be, uh, reading... Reading some, some, uh... Some databank, databank entries. And so we can learn, learn a little bit more about this world. And we're gonna read it right in front of this uh, Earth butthole, and uh, learn. You know, we're gonna learn together. Um, let's see. There we go. I know how to to do it. <laughs> Look at that uh, life pod four is upside down. So we've found four life pods so far. Okay. Um, did I play this one? I don't remember. Okay. So we're gonna start with uh, let's let's the blueprints. That's boring. You know. I don't know about that. Habitat installations? No. Let's, uh... Where's data downloads? Here we go. Aurora survivors. Aurora engineer drone log. Oh, it has a, a play. Exiting sleep mode. Loading voice recognition. Engineer mm. Barkley and chief technology officer you identified. Oh. Exactly. Be nice. Install that circuit box with that repulsion cannon and you'll punch a hole in the cargo bay. <laughs> Damn it, drone. I said propulsion, not repulsion. <laughs> Recalibrate sensors. Sensors recalibrated. Silly sensors robot. Not the I tweak the program. It's like you now. It doesn't like being told what to do. <sighs> drone, I know... His name's Albert now. Albert, I know it's not your fault. But it really helped me do my job if you bring me what I asked for. Thank you. Now go away. Now go away. <laughs> so mean. Hibernation mode. <laughs> this hobby of yours isn't making my job any easier or safer. Maybe so, but it's all that's stopping me from being so bored. I take a space walk in my skimmy. <laughs> all right. Well, where's the? Oh, okay. Codes and clues. Let's look at this. Life pod six. Oh, okay. A life, life pod six. Do I have life pod six? Oh yeah, I do. I must have just found it on accident. It's cool. Uh, let's see. Degasi survivors. Missing. Sh okay. I already first word fucked up. <laughs> Mission search and rescue. Target crew of the Mongolian vessel Degasi. Last known position vicinity of planet four five four six B. Ariadne arm. <clears throat> I guess that's a place. Contact Mongolian emissary Jochi Kassar, Aurora passenger quarters. That Jochi Kassar, I think we can go to his life pod, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think so. Don't we have Officer Keen? No, that's not Jochi Kassar. Uh, no, yeah, I guess we don't have that. Oh, but we could go to the second Officer Keen's last broadcast location. Well, maybe we'll do that in the next episode. Anyway, mission brief. A Mongolian vessel, the Degasi, disappeared almost a decade ago, carrying with it a high-ranking Mongolian chief. Corporate insurance has purchased a passage aboard the Aurora for Emissary Kassar, and your orders are to make every reasonable effort to locate and retrieve the Degasi crew members without compromising the primary mission. Confirming the fate of the crew will aid Altera's diplomatic efforts with the Mongolian councils. Okay. Mission details. Aurora is due to perform a slingshot maneuver around 4546B. Category 3 Ocean Planet. Yep, that makes sense. Approximately 13 months post-launch. This will bring the ship within range of the Degasi's last known position. Additionally... Uh, additional aquatic and all-terrain vehicles have been included in the Aurora's cargo package for this mission. Degasi Crew Manifesto has been distributed to senior employees in a separate message. Okay, well, I guess I didn't get that message. Okay, mission orders. That's cool. So I guess, yeah, uh, this is where you find out that Aurora was doing the uh, slingshot maneuver around our, this planet that we're on. And something happened, and it, it it all that's why we're here. 
That's why we're crash landed on this planet. <clears throat> Auxiliary search and rescue mission. Paul Torgal. Position. Chief of Torgal Corp. Captain of the Degasi. Status. Lost in space near planet 4546B. Age at time of disappearance. 79. Wow, so Paul was old. Every time I played this game, I didn't think he was that old. Paul Torgal and his crew fell out of contact with the Mongolian authorities close to a decade ago. The Torgals were a resourceful and powerful clan, and the ship was well equipped, so their survival was considered likely. However, multiple vessels passing through the system have since attempted to trace the ship to no effect. It is hoped that Aurora's superior scanning suite can do better. Well, I guess uh, didn't do better though. <clears throat> Made majority shareholder in uh, Torgal Corp. Hit by his mother upon her retirement. Oh, okay. So he was kind of like born into it. Interaction with Altera limited to infrequent chartered munitions deliveries. Okay. Basic. Just UPS guy. Beneficiary of life extension technologies. Okay. So he lived really long. Accompanied by his only child, Bart Torgal. No, <laughs> a little Bart. 19. Heir to the Torgal Corporation. Emissary Kassar reports Torgal often traveled with a skeleton crew and was known for making rash but profitable decisions. Sounds like me, huh? Uh, inadequate systems maintenance or straying from its planned route may account for the ship's disappearance. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, the Altera, I mean, uh, the Dagasi came here 10 years ago. 10 years from where my character is here okay here's the aurora black box data okay initiated slingshot maneuver around planet 4546b high velocity energy pulse detected well it's a fucking big ass pulse bro on the planet's surface uh, emergency distress signal sent to altera listening buoy via long range comm relay so they basically i think they told us hey you know don't come down here Impact detected. Life pod bays. <laughs> oh gosh, impact detected. That happened quickly. Uh, life, pa life pod bays on starboard side compromised. Outgoing communications compromised. Jeez. Okay, so emergency evacuation initiated. Manual. That's where we. That's how we started the game. We were uh, going to a little life pod, getting the heck out of there. Manual piloting transferred to Captain Hollister. <laughs> he was super stylish, and he smelled really good. Uh, life pods 1 through 25 launched successfully. Which which life pod? Oh, I'm life pod 5. Entering planetary atmosphere. Massive impact registered drive core shield compromised. Emergency bounce backs received from 8 life pods on planet surface. Oh, 8 life pods. So does that mean that there's only 8? And I found 4 of them, so that means there's 4 more? Possibly. Human, I honestly don't remember. I haven't done everything. I've played this game a few times, but I mainly just kind of like goof around and swim around and collect stuff. But, uh, <clears throat> I haven't read all of this stuff. Human life signs detected over long range at T plus eight hours. One. Oh, that's me. Okay, well, uh, I guess I don't need to go to any other life pods, because, uh, I am the only one. That's cool. Um, personnel unaccounted for. Non-essential systems. Maintenance chief Riley Robinson. <gasps> Riley Robinson. Isn't that... Uh, isn't, I think... I think that's the the girl from the, the next Subnautica game. Which, when I opened Subnautica today, uh, I noticed that there's an update for the Subnautica Below Zero game. And, which I'm super excited to play that after I play this. Uh, it's the first time I've ever played that. I know I've talked about that before, but I just love this game. I love the company behind them. Behind this game. Okay. Let's see. Uh, personnel on account. Oh, yeah. Altera HQ Rescue Solution received at T plus 8 hours to high priority terminal in captain's quarters. Monitoring equipment failed at T plus 13 hours. Damn. Okay. Drive core shielding breach. The Aurora's drive core is shielded by a thick metal shell, 
which breached in multiple locations shortly after the crash. Once breached, it will continue to leak radiation into the surrounding environment until the breaches are sealed. Ha, ah, we did that. We sealed those breaches. After that point, the radiation in the environment will dissipate over time. I think like three days. This procedure should only be attempted with appropriate radiation protection and a fully charged repair tool. Uh, I kind of had it fully charged. It was basically fully charged. VR sweet log. Oh, okay. What's this all? All this stuff. Loading program. Desert Island Drama. VRAP. I've never read this. Uh, size. Three players. R resources. Normal. I don't know what the fuck that means. Spawning players on beach. Okay. Uh, player one. Has been washed away by an unusual... Oh, this is like one of those older kind of games where you read what's happening. I don't fucking know. Maybe this is just a play-by-play -play on how the game... I don't know. Player one has been washed away by an unusually high tide. Ha, ah, bro, that tide was high, bro. Fucking way high. Player two has traded a coconut with player three for ten credits. <laughs> player three has planted a coconut. I love it. Players are getting hungry. Well, maybe player three has grown a coconut tree. Player three has eaten a coconut. Player three is no longer hungry. Player 3 has traded a coconut with player 2 for 30 credits. Oh, damn. He's raised the price of the coconut. Uh, that's inflation for you. Player 2 has eaten a coconut, but is still hungry. Wow, so uh, they're selling uh, weaker coconuts that are not as filling. <laughs> player 3 has traded a coconut with player 2 in exchange for building a tent. What the fuck? What are these coconuts worth? Building a tent? You just fucking trade a coconut for a shelter? Okay. Player 3 is sleeping inside their tent. Okay. Uh, player 2 is cold. <laughs> Night falls. A passing ship is offering trading. Player 2 has traded 30 credits for a musket. Uh oh. Player 3 has been shot twice in the head while sleeping. Player 2 win Player 2 wins. Oh my god. <laughs> player 2 has died from cold and starvation. <gasps> This was this, this I'm like tears coming to my eyes. This started out so nice. Start, they were like playing with they were trading with coconuts. And uh, murder? Oh my god. I I have I not read this stuff before. Okay. Uh, public documents. Altera Alms. Oh, I know why because I don't read anything in games because I'm just fucking Oh, where's the shiny thing? I get the shiny thing I play. Oh, I shoot the gun. That's how I play games. <laughs> anyway, uh, charity is an archaic concept which the realism of today's Alterans have, has rendered obsolete. We understand that we are each responsible for ourselves, but the best way to get the most for ourselves is to work together with Altera. The implications of this reasoning is clear. If someone is in need, they must find a way to be needed. Altera Alms is uh, a training academy for those that need to be needed. We're not a charity because we don't ask for handouts. We prefer to think of ourselves as a philanthropic, uh, philanthropic beneficence, what? Benefic beneficence, uh, <laughs> facilitation service promoting a synergy between employer and workforce. AA operates on a lottery system by investing any number of credits. Yeah, okay, I will. Hold on. <laughs> by, by investing any number of credits, you will be entered into our prize draw. Larger investments yield higher chances of winning. Your credits will go toward training unskilled colonists in vital tasks such as maintenance and interpersonal skills. The colonists receive this training voluntarily and free of charge on condition of a minimum contract with one of our investors and completion of their training. Okay. So that seems a little uh, um, <clears throat> future. That's what's going on in the future. So, But uh, that's, all, that's all the time we have for today's episode. Uh, thank you for joining us. Story time. Episode 15. Story time. Love it. Uh, we will have another story time on episode... 20? 25? Maybe 25? I don't fucking know. Depends on how much uh, stuff they have to read in this game. 
But, um, anyway, thanks for coming by. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you loved it. Uh, <laughs> give it a love if you like it. Uh, this has been Captain Wolf, signing off.